CEOs, high-performing investors, and athletes are all paying attention to this biometric. By raising it, you can literally become more chill. I'm talking about heart rate variability, or HRV for short. So what is HRV? If your heart rate beats at 60 beats per minute, it beats once every second, right? Not exactly. There is some variance between the beats. The variation in time between heartbeats determines heart rate variability. And your nervous system is what's behind all of this. Your autonomic nervous system controls the involuntary aspects of the way that your body functions. It has two branches. First, the parasympathetic branch. This one's often referred to as the rest and digest part of your nervous system. Second, we have the sympathetic branch. This one is often called the fight or flight response. It responds to things like stress, danger, and exercise. Heart rate variability happens because these two branches are sending opposite signals to your heart at the same time. Your parasympathetic nervous system is saying, Hey heart, keep calm and carry on. There's no need to be stressed. Meanwhile, your sympathetic nervous system is like, Hey, um, yeah, we could be in danger right now. By the way, your boss hates you. You should get stressed. Generally, the higher your HRV is, the better. Having a high HRV means that you are spending more time in a low stress state. This makes you more adaptable and ready to perform regardless of the situation. What's interesting is that there are tons of ways to improve your HRV. Here are a few of those ways. Eat healthy, hydrate, don't drink alcohol, consistently sleep well, get exposure to natural light, deliberate cold exposure, breath work, and a regular and intentional practice of gratitude. To see if I can increase my HRV and become measurably more chill over the next week, I'm gonna be doing the following. I'm gonna take a three minute ice bath every day of the week. I'm gonna do breath work every day. I'm going to practice gratitude every day and I'm going to do my best to consistently sleep well. Here are a few things to note. I've been doing Brian Johnson's blueprint diet for the past few weeks and I plan to continue. This diet is by far the healthiest I've eaten in my entire life. As I noted earlier, eating healthy can improve your HRV. If you wanna see what my diet looks like, check this video out. I'm also doing the 75 hard challenge right now. As part of that challenge, I can't drink alcohol and I have to drink a gallon of water every day. As noted earlier, staying hydrated and avoiding alcohol both can increase HRV. If you wanna know more about the 75 hard challenge, make sure to check this video out. I'm going to be using a combination of two devices to measure my HRV. The first is my WHOOP 4.0. Throughout the day, your HRV will fluctuate a lot. To get a consistent and reliable metric, WHOOP calculates your HRV using an average during your sleep. WHOOP weights this average towards your last slow wave sleep stage each night. The second device I'm going to be using is my Apple Watch Series 7. The Apple Watch tracks HRV in real time, so I'll be using that data to assess my HRV during activities. Both the Apple Watch and the WHOOP 4.0 are consumer wearables. As you watch the data that I present, just keep in mind that it comes from a consumer device, not a medical one. I started doing ice baths earlier this year, but it had been about a month since I had done one last. Oddly, I enjoy them. Don't get me wrong. There's always this moment of gut-wrenching anticipation before you take the plunge. But afterwards, I get this positive feeling. It's like, well, that was the hardest thing I'm going to do today. It's going to be a good day. When I get in the ice bath, my heart rate is usually right around 120. I think this comes from the anticipation of taking that plunge. By the time I get out, it's usually in the mid 80s. My strategy while I'm in the cold plunge is to really focus on my breathing. Take a deep breath in, then a deep breath out. So does all this increase HRV? Every time I did ice bath, I noticed an immediate increase in HRV. During the week I was monitoring all this, my baseline HRV averaged 51 milliseconds. By doing ice baths, I was able to get my HRV to jump to 70 milliseconds directly after being in the ice. Uh, did it. Let's go. Breath work is something that I'm new to. A friend recommended that I try an app called Othership Breathwork. So I downloaded this app called Othership Breathwork. I've never done an Othership breathing exercise, so I'm pretty excited to give it a shot. I really have no idea what to expect. If I was feeling stressed out, I would do a breathing exercise midday. Otherwise, I only did them before bed. Now, I was hoping that doing these would increase my baseline HRV that's recorded by WHOOP. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. More on that later. However, I was able to get my HRV to go up to the mid 90 millisecond range while doing these breathing exercises. For years, I had heard performance coaches and athletes talk about gratitude. Until recently, I didn't understand why practicing gratitude 
can be really beneficial to performance. If you place yourself in a state of mind where you're feeling truly grateful, it's incredibly difficult to be in a state of fear or stress at the same time. Every day I go on a quick three mile hike. During mile one of this hike, all I do is practice gratitude. I focus on how thankful I am for the moment I'm in. I think about how grateful I am for the people and opportunities in my life. I let those thoughts fill me up for that entire mile. To see the difference in HRV between walking a mile without practicing gratitude and walking a mile with practicing gratitude, I measured them both. During a normal mile of walking, my HRV averaged 54 milliseconds. During a mile of walking and practicing gratitude, my HRV averaged 91 milliseconds. To me, that's pretty amazing. My overarching goal with this experiment was to see if I could increase the weighted average HRV measurement that WHOOP gives me every day. Unfortunately, I failed to do so. There were several nights where my HRV actually went down. The reason behind this may be that I didn't sleep great over this period. In the weeks leading up to this, I've been taking melatonin most nights before bed. I stopped taking melatonin last Tuesday night and started measuring HRV on Wednesday. This messed with my sleep, which made my baseline HRV measured by WHOOP much lower than it typically would have been. By doing these experiments, I realized that there are a ton of ways to change how I'm feeling. In the long run though, I'd like to improve my baseline HRV. I wanna spend more time on the parasympathetic side of life. If you decide to measure your HRV and implement HRV training, here are some things to keep in mind. HRV is a highly individualized metric. My baseline HRV is likely very different from your baseline HRV, and this doesn't necessarily reflect levels of health or physical fitness. It's important to find your HRV baseline and then make improvements from there. If you made it this far in the video, thanks. Check these videos out, and I'll see you in the next one.